Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 18 of Direwolf20's Let's Play. As you can see, I just flipped on my uh, lever here to start getting some fuel running into these engines. Uh, this fuel line will do a pretty good job of filling everything up. Um, just because of the way uh, liquid physics works in Buildcraft, it's going to try and go into this combustion engine first, but it'll eventually make its way down the line and uh, eventually start filling up this end one here. You can see it's not filling up quite as fast as the ones further ahead, but in a moment they'll all be full and we won't have too much to worry about in terms of all six of those guys running. Um, so that should help to power most of our machines out in the field. I think six combustion engines is probably pretty good. You can also see if I real quick look down here, all those redstone engines at the bottom have hit that red and orange stage. That's why I'm not too concerned about powering these guys up just yet. So I think we're in pretty good shape to start using a bunch of this build craft energy we've got going here. I also did make sure that I've got chunk loading box kind of hanging out all around. You can see my lasers up there. I was just checking out to make sure all these chunks were being loaded and everything looks like it's good. So off to building. Let's see, what does Direwolf want to build today? Looks like this thing's done so I can switch that thing off. Um, I might want to get myself some more fuel. So let's turn on our refinery control and maybe it would be a good idea for me to finally build my third one of these little guys. That's probably not too bad of an idea. So Hmm, I thought I'd be producing enough energy at this point, considering I'm really not powering too many machines right now. But, oh well, I'll figure that out shortly. Let's head back to our base and see how things are making out over here on this side. At least I've got some fuel production going. How's my forestry items? Good, I'm getting forestry items. That's a good indication that things are running over there. My apiary. I might want to pop over there in a minute. Uh, but for now, yeah, let's let's take a run over there, see what's going on. And at the very least, I can check out what's up with my bees and whatnot. So, yep, ready for some more common bees. Sweet. So let's try and combine a common with a forest drone. And maybe, do I have a meadows drone around here somewhere? Meadows Forest. All right, that should be good enough. So I'm going to take my common princess and combine her with a forest drone. And this guy over here, I'll take my common meadows princess and do a forest drone. Sure, why not? I got a common forest queen. All right, cool. And this one gave me a meadows forest queen. Oh, well, not a big deal. And then if we go check out on our forest, oh yeah, we've got plenty of stuff going on over here. All kinds of goodies being collected for us. Perfect. Tree farm doing its job. Happy to see that. All right, so let's get to building something. And I guess before I get building too much, I should mention that I recently added two, well, added one mod at least. Uh, the first mod that I added is... Um, the Advanced Machines mod from Industrial Craft. It gives us some uh, solar arrays, which are really cool. I'll probably get into building those later. And uh, back in the day before we had those uh, overclockers, it was pretty much the best way to macerate things quickly and take care of stuff. Uh, but for now, I might stick with the overclockers. Uh, but we'll see. I might find a use for at least the uh, centrifuge in the future. So for now, we've got advanced machines that kind of work like the induction furnace for all three uh, other machines that didn't have advanced versions, the macerator, the compressor, and the uh, centrifuge. I've also updated... Um, equivalent exchange here to equivalent exchange 2 version 1.1. Um, equivalent exchange is now available for multiplayer and this is the client version that you would use if you're going on multiplayer servers and it's pretty much just a minor update to version 6. Some aesthetic changes for the most part. I don't think too much major was added but you can check out the change log on the forums. Um, one thing that is interesting to note right now by the way is um, you can consume items inside this chest that aren't part of the target block. So if I wanted to convert some of this cobblestone into smooth stone, um, yeah, it just grabbed a lot of that stuff, didn't it? Uh, number one, it's going to move pretty darn fast, but it'll also consume the cobblestone that we've got. So that's a neat little trick that we've got available to us now. We've also got these progress bars here, and uh, I think that's the most part of it. One note, though, when you do upgrade, uh, my antimatter relay wasn't eating items. Uh, that was a problem, obviously. And uh, 
basically the way I resolved that was pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, break the block and place it back down again. That's all I had to do. And then it started eating items again. So just keep in mind if you upgrade. Um, the other bug that happens when you upgrade is my alchem alchemy bag was empty. So I just went into NEI and gave me back most of the items that I had in here. So I don't think I cheated too much by just replacing items that were lost. But just keep in mind your alchemy bags may empty. And uh, you may need to break and replace your antimatter relays if you decide to upgrade. So just an FYI, guys. And for now, I want to collect a bit more obsidian. And as you can see, this neat little progress bar is actually really pretty good looking. I like that. That's a good job, Zeno. Kudos on that. Just making myself a bit of obsidian. Cool. That should be enough for now. Maybe in the future I'll figure out a way to automate stuff with that. That would be pretty neat. Uh, I'm going to make sure all that obsidian is hanging out in my miscellaneous variables. And I'll meet you guys back over in my... Um, build craft room. It's time to build some stuff. All right, one thing before I do go build some stuff. Uh, let's get our remote ordering tool here. There it is, remote orderer. I do want to go ahead and build that one little thing that I mentioned to build right here eventually. That's the uh, diamond pipe, or the diamond gear. So for that I'm going to need one automatic crafting table, and I think I'll need a couple pieces of glowstone. Two of those, please. So there we go, and I should have on me a basic logistics pipe, and you guys should know the drill by now. Crafting logistics pipe in front of a crafting table. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to have to do is request a gold gear, which will be used in the recipe, so one of those please. And while I'm waiting for that thing to build up, I can place down my auto crafting table right there. And my crafting logistics pipe will go down in a moment. I'm just going to take my gold gear right here and surround it with diamonds. And put this guy down and teach it. Ta-da! So now my logistics system knows about diamond gears, and that's the last version of gears that I need to teach it. Alright guys, hanging out in my little room here, let's build the first component of what we want to place down here. And that's a pretty straightforward item, it's called a chest. Not too hard. Uh, that's probably going to go here, I don't know, maybe right there. Maybe, we'll figure it out. Maybe I have to move that guy, we'll see. Uh, the next thing I need to do is get ready to build an assembly table. That's right, it's time for this guy. So I'm going to need a diamond gear, another diamond, a piece of redstone and six obsidian. So let's take care of the request for items right now. Uh, one diamond and a piece of redstone and six obsidian and a diamond gear. One. Cool. And while I'm waiting for my diamond gear to get going, I'll start crafting this guy. Shouldn't take too long for that thing to show up over here. There it is. Come on, pick it up. Darn you. Diamond gear and redstone. Ta-da! Assembly table. Uh, this is the item required to make all the new and cool things available in Buildcraft 3.x. Um, the assembly table is pretty straightforward. It's got an input side and an output side. And pretty much what will happen here is we need to build some items called lasers, which are shown right here. Uh, I'm going to go with two of them to start. So let's get four diamonds and four obsidian and a good amount of redstone. I might as well just request like half a stack of the stuff. So uh, four obsidian, four diamond, and we'll do 32 redstone. And while that stuff's showing up, I'll be able to start crafting. There we go. Uh, lasers are used to assemble items on the assembly table. Pretty straightforward little device. Um, what I think I'm going to do is just place some blocks right here and here and place the lasers right below them. That should be good. Do I want them a little higher? Maybe just for aesthetic reasons I might want them higher. Is that cool looking? Yeah, I like that. Now, of course, they don't need the cobblestone on them. I just want it there for temporary reasons. Um, 
I'm going to need to get some power over to those guys. So let's consider grabbing... Uh, I've got a power teleport pipe here. Why not? Just to make it look all kinds of pretty. And I'll need two of these redstones. There we go. And one of these days I'll remember how the project table works and not do silly things like I just did. No promises. Sometimes habits are just hard to break. So there we go. And I can set down my power teleport pipe here again on frequency 1. And can receive will be true. So again, all the power is going right in there. And you can see it already starting to filter. So now that we've got these guys ready, let's go ahead and pick something to craft. I'm going to place a piece of redstone on the left side here. And you can see one of the first items that you can do is get a redstone chipset. Pretty straightforward item. And if I want, I can tell this assembly table to start crafting the redstone chipset by left clicking it on the side here. And what should happen is these lasers should start engaging, I think. Oh, I think I need some more redstone in there. Yep, there we go. So the lasers will start doing their thing, charging up and doing all kinds of coolness. And it's assembling the redstone chipset that I requested using the redstone. And it should automatically deposit the items that it crafts straight into this chest. So let's give it a few minutes here and I'll be right back. There we go. We're about to finish. And you can see it just picked up another couple pieces of redstone there. And it deposited the redstone chipset right there next to it. And I can turn this machine off by just deselecting the redstone chipset, clicking on it. But I'm going to let a couple more of these things build up. And I'll be right back after I've got a few. Now the next item I'm going to look at making is called the redstone iron chipset. This guy's pretty straightforward, just redstone plus iron. And it should start doing its energy thing here in a moment. And what I'm thinking is maybe I want to go ahead and upgrade these uh, lasers, get a third one going here. So why don't I go request a couple pieces of obsidian and diamond. So pretty expensive, uh, pretty time consuming process, but definitely worth it because, uh, didn't I say two obsidian? Ah, oh, there it is. Definitely a time-consuming process, but very worth it, because there's a lot of cool stuff you can do uh, with this. So let's see, where'd my redstone go? And by putting down a third laser, it'll just speed up the process a little bit. I will, of course, need one more view. There we go. Place that guy there this thing on that, and then that'll start building up. And the power is all coming in over the teleport pipe, as you can see. Maybe I want to just smoothen this thing out a little bit. What I might want to do is grab one more of these guys. I might just want to teleport pipe through the ceiling here. And I do have kind of a reason for doing this, believe me. It's coming, but just not there yet. So let's see, how's my power doing now? Pretty good. Not sure why the lasers are dark like that. They should be more like this bright color, like this thing is right here. Um, but yeah, I don't know what the deal is with that. Looks like I need a little bit more power to be dedicated to that thing. So if I turned off my refinery. Will I get more power coming through here? I should. There we go. Up to blue. See? That's why I have this control switch here, because I want to be able to turn off my refineries and boost the power to my lasers. <laughs> All right, so now I've got some redstone iron chipsets. So let's take these things out of here and see what kind of cool stuff we can do. Um, if I place my redstone iron chipsets or my uh, my redstone uh, chipsets here, you can see I'm starting to get some gates. And these things are going to be very important for us. Uh, another thing I can do is create some wires. Why don't I get them ready soon? So you can see by putting some red, uh, rose red stuff in here with my redstone, I'm sorry, with my redstone chipset, with iron. There we go. Yeah, that's it. I'll learn this recipe eventually. Ah, there it is. So it's, uh, it ran instantly almost because of the stored energy on the table, but there you go, red piping wire. So again, that was rose red, redstone, and iron in any combination. And the red piping wire is gonna be created with these lasers. 
There they go. Again, not sure why I'm getting that little bit of a visual thing going on. And I'm guessing there's no energy flowing because some other machine's taking it up. I'll have to go look into that in a bit. Or you know what? There's no energy flowing because there doesn't need to be. It built that red piping wire. Wire is pretty quick to create. So let's go ahead and get back to creating some more of these red iron chipsets. That's probably a good idea. And note that once I add red piping wire in here, and that goes along with the iron chipset, so iron chipset plus red wire chipset, we start getting iron and or iron ore gates. Those guys are going to be also very important for us going forward. But for now, I'm just kind of showing you guys the different things you can build using this. So uh, I'm going to let it create another redstone iron chipset, and I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, got it. So I'm back here. Got another redstone iron chipset. I'm going to go ahead and craft myself an iron and gate. I think that's probably the best course of action right now. And uh, I should be able to get two of them by combining the redstone iron chipsets that I just created and the red piping wire. So that's going to take a little bit because gates are a little bit more complicated to build than the chipsets and the wires. So again, I'm going to cut the video out and I'll be back once I'm ready to show you how these things work. And woot, we've made progress. The uh, progress bar is down there, so it looks like I've got my first iron and gate. Now, uh, if you guys don't know what these gates are all about, don't worry, I'll do my best to explain them to you. And if you're really super confused, I do have some uh, videos up about the uh, Buildcraft 3.x updates that kind of explain how they work. But basically, there's four types of gates in the game. And if I open up any eye here, uh, I can show you guys what uh, the gates look like. So there's two fundamental parts to a gate. Um, there's first off the basic gate, which is pretty simple and doesn't have a lot of options available to it. Um, it's allowed to detect one conditional and uh, do a very limited number of things as, uh, as an output of that conditional. The iron and gate can de detect two conditionals, and uh, you can do the same thing if both of those conditionals are met, whereas the iron or gate can detect two conditionals and do the same thing if either one or the other is met. And the gold and diamond ones, I believe, can do four and eight, respectively, but I might be wrong about that. Uh, I haven't done too much with this, to be honest with you, in a legit play. Mostly just TMI and playing around in a test world to figure out how they work. Um, and the wires are an important part of this process. And if I get these wires here, I can show you some basic ideas of how this can work. Um, why don't we get sleeping through the night here, and I'll come right back to figure out how everything is going to go. And real quick, I just want to show you guys one feature of the assembly table. Um, if you highlight two items over here, as you can see, I've highlighted the iron chipset and the iron AND gate. Uh, it's going to finish up this iron AND gate and then move on to the iron chipset next. Um, and once the iron chipset is done, if it did have another iron AND gate potential here, it would go ahead and craft it. So it'll go back and forth between the two items, or as many items as you click off. So that's uh, just an interesting thing to note about this guy. So let's go outside behind my house here and see what kind of trouble we can get into with respect to this system. Um, I have right here an oil tank, right? And I'm going to go over and look. The oil tank currently has a little bit of room left at the top. It's not completely full. That's an important thing to keep in mind for what I'm about to show you. Now, if I place this iron AND gate on my water transport pipe, right next to and touching this oil tank, it's very important to be right next to it, it'll go right on there like so. And if I open up the interface on this thing, you'll see that, like I said, there's two conditionals available on the iron AND gate. This is a pretty basic gate. Diamond ones are a lot more complex. And there's a couple things we can detect on the left side. So this is kind of like your if conditional. If your pipe is empty, and the middle bar here is telling you if the current conditional that you have selected is true. Well, right now the pipe is empty, so it's true. Or if there's currently liquid traversing the pipe. No, there's not, so it's not lit up. You can also detect the adjacent tank. Is the tank empty? No. Is there liquid in the tank? Yes. Is there space for liquid in the tank? Yes. And if the tank is full, it's currently not true. Um, so that's pretty much what you can detect right now based on the things that this gate is adjacent to. Uh, connecting them to adjacent machines or other things can do all kinds of other neat stuff. Uh, these gates are actually pretty darn powerful. And what I'm going to do is tell it that I want the conditional here to be space for liquid. Um, and what I want to do with that is say, 
number one, I could emit a redstone signal. So this block would be is currently emitting a redstone signal as a result of the fact that there's space in the liquid for liquid in the tank. But that's all we can do at the moment. However, if we take this red piping wire and right click on this block here, we can run this wire all along these pipes. How neat is that? For the record, it's very neat. And what you can do now is say, based on the conditional, emit a red pipe signal. So notice that the pipe signal is now on the red wire. And there's actually four wires, red, green, yellow, and blue. I haven't crafted any more than the red ones just yet, but in the future you can do that. And we could do other things too. We could say, um, you know, other conditionals that could be matched. So we could say, if there's space for liquid and the pipe is empty, then emit a red pipe signal. And maybe I want to do that. So let's see what happens. Uh, now before I do anything else, I want to grab some cobblestone pipes here. And if I combine these cobblestone pipes with gravel, as you can see, I've got a cobblestone structure pipe. A pretty neat little toy. And what I can do with that cobblestone structure pipe is pretty much connect it to an adjacent pipe and run wires between that adjacent pipe onto the cobblestone structure pipe. So this thing is not connected to my liquid pipe in any way, right? But I can still run wires across it. I would not be able to run wires across the ground or across any other pipes. So this cobblestone structure here is a way to connect two different piping systems. And what I want to do is run a piping system like so. No, not down there. There we go. And I'm going to run it right over to this thing. What am I, short by one? Ha. I was close. There we go. And I'm going to need some more red wire stuff. So why don't I run back to my remote orderer and do a little request here. Do I have any roses? I should have a bunch of them, I hope, somewhere in this big old interface of convolutedness. There it is. I'm going to request five roses and uh, convert them to some rose red because I'm going to need a few more wires here. So let's turn off our red iron chipset. See how quickly the wires go? Yeah, they're pretty darn fast. And note now that it went back to creating redstone iron chipsets, which is good. So now I've got a good amount of wire. You get a lot of this stuff. It's really not hard to get. Um, and I'm going to run that all along this guy right here. And I can run them right up to this point. Okay. Now let me consider exactly, I might want to just for, you know, aesthetic purposes, change this up a little bit. So give me a minute here. Let me think. All right, just to clean it up a little bit so I can get around a little bit easier, uh, I've just moved this around just a bit. Not a huge change, obviously. Let's get these cobblestone structure pipes relayed. There we go. And now I'm going to run my red wiring like so. Cool. Now why don't we just, for the heck of it, go ahead and disable this uh, transmission stuff for now. Or you know what I can do, probably? I can do something like this. Space for liquid and pipe empty is emitting a redstone signal. And I think I can get this guy off here just like that and replace it. Because I don't want actually anything to happen just yet. And then I'm going to come over to this thing. Remember this guy? When he receives a redstone signal, he's going to turn on, allowing power to flow up to my pump. So if I were to grab another one of those iron gates, and I should have one made by now, I would hope. Yep, iron and gate. Perfect. And remember, the iron AND gate is the middle tier guy. I'm going to connect it right there, and I'm going to put my red piping wire like so. Cool. Now when I open up this interface, we can do a couple things. We can say, um, if the red pipe signal is on, emit a redstone signal. So what that means is, basically, if there's space for liquid and the current pipe is empty, as in there's no liquid flowing through this pipe at the moment, go ahead and emit a red pipe signal. And then over here, we're going to say, if we're getting a red pipe signal, emit a redstone signal. And that should turn on this pipe and let everything roll. So let's give it a shot. What do you say? Uh, I can simply just reattach this thing. And what should happen is now we should start getting energy flowing through here, right? Maybe, possibly, potentially. Well, the energy is available. And look, yep, there we go. Oh, 
fell in a hole while trying to demo. Look at that. So we just got some oil in here. And the oil is making its way. And you can see right now that there is space for liquid and the pipe is empty. So see how the conditional just changed? I got there before the tank filled up. But I, the pipe wasn't empty because there was liquid flowing through it. And look at that now. The pipe is empty once again. And there's no room for liquid. So for now, this oil is just going to bounce around inside this pipe for a few minutes. And our tanks are full. Pretty awesome. So we've pretty much just created an automated way to keep these tanks full at all times. As soon as the tanks have a little bit of space left, they're going to send that red wire signal all the way back to this gate and activate it, allowing energy to flow to the pump, filling the tanks back up, and as soon as the tanks are full, it'll stop requesting energy. So we've just done an automated system using Buildcraft logic gates. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited about that. I think that's neat. And there's a lot more logic gates and a lot more potential available here. I haven't even scratched the surface on what's possible with these gates. And believe me, I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff with them in this series. So you'll definitely want to stay tuned for that. So it looks like we're still building some iron redstone chipsets. And why don't I grab them out of there and start asking this guy to build some more iron gates for me while he's at it. So iron and gates back in the mix. And remember, the iron ore gate will just be a little bit different. It'll say... For example, in this case, if there's space for liquid or if the pipe is empty, go ahead and emit a redstone signal. So right now we're not getting a redstone signal because only one of the conditionals is met, not both. But if we used an OR gate, either one of these would emit a redstone signal. And just sneaking back into my equivalent exchange room, you can see we've got a good amount of energy built up in our antimatter relay at the moment. I believe my Klein Star has a good amount of energy stored in it as well. And because I just used a whole bunch of diamonds, I think it's about time I go mining for a little bit. Um, I do want to get some more diamonds because there's something I want to build this episode. Hopefully I can get enough materials to do it. It's another equivalent exchange thingy. Alright guys, just got done with a little bit of a mining expedition here. Dropping off my resources and my favorite little machine. Let's see how we made out after I turn off my gem of eternal density. Ah, a few diamonds. I did actually not find too many diamonds down there, I'm sorry to say. Uh, so I guess in order to do this, I'm going to have to go ahead and convert some diamonds from, let's go with um, this stuff, tungsten. Let's go with, uh, I don't know, six tungsten. That should give me about a dozen diamonds. That should be good. So I'm going to throw my Klein Star right in uh, this guy here. And we'll start burning off this tungsten. Oh yeah, look at all that. Got a huge amount of EMC stored up now. And that's going to allow us to get ourselves some diamonds. Which is what I want. Um, but let's see what happens. I'll be back in a minute once all this stuff is drained in. There we go. So, I'm going to steal this client star here and throw it into my transmutation table. And let's see what we've got. I do have a Mark I energy collector in there and the alchemical chest. Let's grab a piece of dark matter. Yoink. All right, that used up a lot of stuff. And let's go with, uh, let's see what we can make using dark matter. There's red matter, eternalist fuel, all around the dark matter. That's what I thought it was. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just enough. Holy cow, I had just enough in my client star for that. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out this collector here. Thank you. And what I'm going to do is take my philosopher's stone right now place down my dark matter and surround it with the eternalist fuel and that gives me red matter my very first piece of red matter you have no idea how much I want to use this for a um, mercurial eye there's a lot of cool things you can do with red matter all kinds of nifty toys but in particular I'm looking for the one that requires or is shaped crafting there we go so I just need to put some glowstone all around it not too bad uh, let's go in here and see what we can do about that. Glowstone, can you hook me up? Ha! Barely enough. Barely. Come back here, client star. Yoink. Uh, so let's do this. I can probably just throw a diamond's worth in there. That should be good. There we go and a little excess EMC. And remember, you never really waste an EMC when you use it. So red matter, and I don't have enough, did I miscalculate this? Yep, 
Need one more. So, we're going to upgrade our collector to a Mark III collector. This guy upgrades things so much faster. I mean, watch, look how fast the uh, EMC input's coming in here. I mean, this thing is just cooking along real fast. Uh, that's good. We've now got our Tier 3 collector. And eventually I'm going to want to get a Tier 3 relay. Because of the Tier 3 relay, we'll get more bonuses from our collectors. But maybe even before I do anything like that, let's take this guy here. And there's one thing I want to do. Oh boy, 448,000 M3, MC, EMC. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Uh, basically, that thing's worth a lot of EMC. A whole heck of a lot. So uh, just keep that in the back of your mind. In the future, I can create these directly out of the transmutation table or in a condenser if I wanted to. Um, but right now, Relay Mark II is doing its thing. So I will let that roll and I'll start storing some energy in my client star too. And let's go build some cool stuff. And look at the time. It's already about 31 minutes into this video. So I think it's actually, unfortunately, a good wrapping up point. So I've worked my way up to a Mark III collector, and I started building some gates from Buildcraft. Uh, next episode, I might wind up using those gates a little bit more, and there's a bunch more stuff I want to do going forward. So I hope you guys enjoyed episode 18 here of Direwolf 20's Let's Play. How's my gates doing? Oh yeah, we ran out of resources. We got ourselves a few of these guys. Let's go ahead and move them into here. And do something like this. There we go. Get ourselves a few more iron and gates. So this is Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take it easy.